Hey everyone, I'm Nick and welcome back to the channel. I recently bought a 200,000 mile W220 S-Class for just $2,000. Its suspension was in terrible shape, but we fixed that in the last video when we put new struts in from our friends at Max Peating Rods. If you haven't seen that, I'll leave a link down in the description. Now when we first got the car, the air compressor was making a bunch of noise and it didn't sound great, so today we're replacing it with one from Max Peating Rods. A huge thank you to them for sending this out. So. Let's get started. Now, to access the compressor, it actually lives up under here, under the bumper. And this panel, it splits into two halves right here. So we're gonna be removing this side, which is the passenger side in the US. And now these are eight millimeter screws. We got three right here, we got one here. And then as we go towards the wheel well, we've got two here. There may be a third here. And then um, this spot here is actually held in by the middle panel, which you can remove or just remove the screw. Here is the compressor. Based on the blue writing, this is a Mercedes part from a junkyard. And we will be removing the oh dear. Look at that. Someone's messed with this before. What's what's happened here? Okay, so there's a screw there. There's a maybe. I gotta figure out everything, but what the heck? Uh oh. Oh, okay. No wonder it's making all that noise. I don't really know what that's holding in, but it looks like it's this bracket. That's weird. Okay, and then the level adjuster block is up here on top. Oh. All right, now our compressor is mounted in three places. Got a nut here, one nut right back here. On mine, that one's plastic. And one that's supposed to be right here. It looks like someone sheared it off and they're holding the compressor in place with this vice grip holding that shaft, that like uh, threaded shaft or stud. And uh, <laughs> that may be part of why we have a bunch of noise. Now it's also connected with a connector right here and right here, which is the main power and pressure valve. And then there's this set of hoses which go up to the air filter. And that air filter will pop out of its housing. You should be able to see there's like a black plastic plastic or rubber piece that it slots into. So we're gonna pull that down, disconnect those two connectors there. Oh, and this air line right here that we're gonna have to undo as well. I'm actually gonna start with the air line. That's a 10 mil. It's probably easier to take this connector off first. Get a little piece of tape to plug it up and cover it up. Alright, I'll mark that as two compressor. Get this other connector off here. Okay, that's the other one. Now we have to do the nuts. And I guess nuts and I guess channel lock. Or script. Okay, so this one and this one should support the compressor even with the bolts out, which is nice. Oh, 
there's a spring in there too. Okay. Oh, they zip tied that one. <laughs> Shoot. But before that comes down, I'm gonna pull this off. If I can. Okay, well, that'll do. So sheared off. Uh, how did, how was that even? Uh, okay. Out of our three compressor mounting posts, two of them were sheared off. And since these are studs, we'll have to see if we can fix this bracket. Now those two bolts or nuts are what hold in the level controller or the valve block. So I'm going to spray those with PV blaster so that hopefully they will come out without too much trouble. Now if we look at the compressor here, these are the rubber insulators to help silence it. And this is one of the complete like washer sleeves with a spring. So that's supposed to go in there and on one of those shafts. And this is one of the little nuts that threads on to this. Now I have another spring here for one of these and I don't really know what happened to the rest because obviously somebody destroyed stuff and just sort of put it back in and hung it even though well you know this actually may be a used one from another car but since they never fixed struts or there's a leak somewhere else this one was worked pretty hard we'll see we're putting a new one in anyway but it's gonna be an interesting challenge to figure out how to fix what's up in there. So we'll see. So with the compressor out of the way, I thought I'd bring in a second set of eyes. So there's a stud here with threads, a stud here with... Okay. Oh boy. And then a stud here with... Oh, well what the actual... Damn. I mean, it's rusty, but it's not that... Oops. It's rusty, but it's not that rusty. Like, I thought that it was, like, bad. But it's... It's pretty clean under here for 200,000 miles on the East Coast. This is just irresponsible. Yeah, that that is a rusty nut, and that's gonna need heat. But... I mean, the, the only way this could happen is if someone literally went in there with like a gun and just tightened it down. Unless it had rusted. You know, I, I mean, I normally I would agree with you, but this these threads don't even look swollen. No. I think I think that this happened when they went to put the used compressor in and no. they went to gun it down. It's which, by the way, easy. these nuts are small. That's five million. I think, or three or five. Yeah, so Gundy McGunderson, the same idiot who worked on the oil pan on my Range Rover, was in here like, <laughs> bam! And just and took they, that right off. And then they had to zip tie the compressor to hang it. Oh, oh, so that's why it was vibrating around making a racket. Jeez. Yeah. <sighs> so... You might be able to fix the bracket. Yeah, I don't know. I mean... Maybe if we weld some all thread to the bottom of this, but probably need a new bracket. You know, when you said it was rusty, I was like, oh boy, the whole car is probably just a rust bucket. But it's not. That, yeah, don't use this if you have a pacemaker. So the lower says, it says, hot, magnet, no pacemaker. Now, since our plan is to overhaul the entire air suspension system, we also want to remove the valve block that's mounted on top of the bracket. Unfortunately, one of the nuts is rusted in place. What I'm trying to do here is use heat to help free it up, and I'm using an induction heater. Working. Hmm? It's working. 
the uh, the kiwi blasts just started boiling. Perfect. Get it hot and then hit it with the juice. It's the rice group garage, heat juice, 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 heat, 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 heat juice, heat, 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 juice, 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 heat, heat, juice, juice, heat. Ooh. Ooh. What? Smoke. Yeah, it's... The PP blaster. Yeah, but I don't know if there's stuff on the other side. Yeah, it's rubber on the other side. Well... We're burning a rubber. Oh, yeah, it's turning. Perfect. Also, there's rubber that melted into it. So huh? Rubber melted onto the nut. I don't know if there's much we can do about it. We had to get it off without snapping it. How is the whole thing turning? Yeah, the valve block is free. All right, what? Oh, I see. So the the rubber tore because it's like a rubber bushing, and then like a bolt molt melted into it. And I guess we either freed it or it just ripped. Now, before I removed the lines, I've actually labeled them all. And what I've done is they're kind of on two layers, and the one that actually plugs in higher is the line that goes to the compressor. The others, there's five lines that are in line. And so I marked one as F1, which happens to be the blue line. They're all color coded blue. Uh, I guess this one's blank. Yellow, red, green. And so I, this is F1, two, three, four, R5 for rear. So I store the rear of the car. That's the front of the car. I'm actually not gonna remove the line that is goes to the compressor because I can just remove that after it's out of the car because that communicates between the two. Now on the valve block there's also right here an electrical connector that we'll also have to remove. So I'm gonna pull those lines out, make sure the tape doesn't come off, but I'm gonna take a picture first so that I'm able to put them back in the right place. Because you don't want the car to try to be raising one corner, but then actually be raising the other. Probably have some problems if you do that. While it's possible to work on all this from down here, there's a better way to work on these lines that we'll see in a little bit. This is our block. You can see that upper line I was talking about. And we're gonna rebuild this. Now this normally, you can see there's a like a little bolt and threads embedded in the rubber. And then you can like get in here with a wrench to unscrew them. So I'm probably gonna have to get a replacement one of these since that's the other part is still stuck in the bracket. And hopefully I can get a replacement compressor bracket. Now this is gonna get rebuilt. But, oh nice, look at that. All the ports are color coded, so that's really good. But the labeling will help too. And this part with the plugs, there's two plugs actually, goes towards the rear of the car. So that's gonna be our R5, F1, 2, 3, 4, 5, just based on my labeling. But you can just go by the colors otherwise. As we'll find out later, they don't all have the color coding. So that's some good news. I got a new used bracket for the compressor. It's got all its threads and uh, all the mounting kit. So you have to install this. Now to install this, we need to remove the wheel liner and that'll give us better access back here where the bracket is. And that's actually maybe useful to remove even if you're just servicing the compressor or if you want to service your valve block because you'll have direct access from this side and the bottom. Now to remove our wheel liner, there's a bunch of 10 millimeter plastic nuts. One here, one here, one back here. We got two here, then there's a split, and then there's two more here, one there, there. 
And then there's some eight millimeters on the bottom too. And there. Yep. And the two back here. Now, this also attaches to the under tray, but since we already removed that, we're good. And actually, it attaches right here too, but someone's been here and this is broken. So, we are going to work on removing at least this panel. If we need to remove both, we'll do that, but we'll start with this. I'm gonna take the two up here as well. Oh no, no! We have one casualty here. The stud that the nut goes onto, sheared off from rust. If there's like a seal in here, it'll come off with it. Here you can see the compressor bracket mounts right here. So it's three 13 millimeter bolts, well, one nut and two bolts back there. One there and then one a little bit higher right there. I'm gonna spray these with PE Blaster and hopefully that'll uh, help them come free safely. I had already broken them free, but yeah. Right here you can really see like no threads, no threads, and that one's okay. And it's actually kind of rusty compared to the new one we have. Right here, it's actually in better shape. Now I've remounted the valve block onto the bracket, because you can actually reach everything with the valve block in place. It makes it a little easier to tighten things up. And I'm gonna walk you through how the compressor mounts and what I think happened on the old one. Now, there's supposed to be a washer here. And then we have this assembly. So the rubber grommet will mount on the compressor. And we'll slot it on. And then the spring and this collar will slot over it. And that means that the compressor oil will be supported on the spring. So any vibrations will be taken up by the spring and the rubber. There's no rattling. And then we have this teeny tiny little nut, which I believe is M5. And that will get screwed on here very gently. And it's literally, it's only three Newton meters, so it's like, just once it's in, you want to leave it. And that's the same on all three sides. I've even like cleaned up the threads and put anti-seize in there just to be extra sure that nothing breaks or gets stuck later if we have to come back in. I'll make sure that's nice and clean. Now these are the mounts that go between the bracket and the valve body. And it can be pretty tough. The the nuts on the bottom sides can get seized up so it's tough and when you go to turn, the rubber will twist. So it's not always super easy to remove, but you can actually buy these. Uh, like FC Piero has some, I believe, but I was able to reuse these. I got one set with the bracket as well. I'm gonna remount this. start reconnecting the lines in here. Now I am uh, fortunate enough to have a valve block that has the color coding, but I also did mark everything. So I'm gonna go by the, uh, the labels I made on each line and I'll work them in. Okay, if you can get it started by hand, that's ideal. And then you can work it in. I'm starting with the ones on the ends because they're the hardest ones to get to. 
because of the edge of the valve block. And again, we just want these to be seated. Is this supposed to go at five Newton meters max? As you put these in, you want to make sure, try to make sure that you're not tangling your lines too much. Now our line that goes to the compressor also has to go back in. This is our compressor. These blue markings, similar to the blue markings on the strut that came off the other side. So I think this was a junkyard part, and there's nothing wrong with that. It worked. Obviously, whoever installed it did some questionable things with zip tying it in place, but it is a Mercedes part. Uh, but we know this one's been working really, really hard. And uh, yeah, we're gonna replace it. We got a brand new one right here. So let's get that open and take a look. A little piece of paperwork that describes the mounting. Let me show you a couple things about how to get to it. And a couple things on like where it mounts and all that. Oh, they even include, I think they even include a relay. I think I saw it. So let's see what we got. Our relay right here, which we'll have to put in. And this is our new air compressor. And as you can see, our mounting points will need little rubber isolators. So we're gonna have to put those in. Oh, it even comes with its own line here. So we're gonna just gonna have to take this line off and install it on the dryer, the filter. So we're gonna use Try to figure out which ones are best. These are pretty hard. These are pretty soft. Yeah. And take the ones that came off the compressor from this car. So they feel a little softer. You want to put these with this facing towards the bottom, which is going to be this side, because that's what the compressor is going to be resting on. I've got all our isolators on. You have to kind of like, what I ended up doing was pushing and twisting a bit and then kind of wriggling it in. And now they're in place. Now right here we have a little plug. So we pull that plug out. We're gonna fix our hose onto here. There we go. Now we'll orient this as needed to get to our filter right here. Which we'll probably have to replace in the future. Installing the compressor from the bottom is really tedious. It would probably be a lot more manageable with a helper holding the compressor in place. I recommend mounting it to the bracket off of the car and then reinstalling the bracket and compressor as one assembly, which you'll see soon. Next, we're also going to replace the compressor relay because if your compressor has been turning on often, your relay has been working hard too. So our air compressor relay is right here, so we're going to be replacing that too with the one that's included in the kit. It's got it. Work that out. That's the relay. It'll only fit one way. So we're gonna put this aside and uh, grab our new one here. It'll fit in there. And the way I was able to pull the other one out was to wiggle it, not just side to side, but front and back. So like kind of a circle while pulling up. Go. That's in. And now we're going to be able to test it out. When I pressurized the system, I noticed that the pressures were just dropping pretty quickly, and that's not a good sign. So let's go back to the block and take a look. I sprayed some soapy water on the fittings, and it turns out at least three were leaking badly. Some sealed up a little better when I tightened them up, but they ended up needing new O-rings. So it turns out this valve block is leaking internally and I fixed the o-ring so the external leaks are gone but the air tank all the struts were all leaking down very quickly when I pressurized them which tells me this is done for so I'm actually gonna replace this and I'm gonna while I'm here actually replace this bracket too because I have a brand new one right here well brand new <laughs> I went to another junkyard and Guard this piece. And it has the valves on it. Now, last time I removed the compressor first, and that was 
kind of a pain. So what I've done here is I've removed the connectors to the valve block, the connectors to the compressor, and I'm actually just gonna unbolt it from here with the, the nut here, the bolt there, and the other bolt up top. There's a stud on this, so that'll hold it a bit. Oh, I also um, disconnected the, I did not disconnect it, but the air line from the compressor, the intake. You wanna take that out too. And then pull this assembly out. Let's go. All right, there's uh, that bracket on the back. We're gonna undo the nuts there. Carefully uh, lift this out. Put this aside. Now I don't want this to get seized on in any way, so. Oops. First, I want to double check that the threads are good here. That feels good. So what I'm going to do, this is optional, but having pulled a bunch of these off different cars, things can get seized on the studs here. So I'm going to just slap some anti-seize on here. Before we go any further here, I just want to point out that these assemblies, these rubber guys, these can split off the rubber and the, the metal part of the stud here and these tend to rust so that's why I get this assembly here uh, but just be aware that this can be seized on and uh, can separate from the rubber here these are available at FCP Euro and probably other places too I have. so if something does happen you can replace them I'm going to attach Compressor before putting the bracket back in, unlike last time, that was such that was such a pain. I'm going just till they're seated. Their spec is two or three newton meters, which is very very low. Yeah. Now I have uh, this line here, came off with the new valve block, so I'm just gonna put that in. And uh, I'm actually replace this O-ring, it's a zero one zero, so. I just realized I forgot to put this bracket on. <laughs> so that goes here. I didn't find a torque spec for these bolts, but they go into the chassis. So pretty tight, I guess, but not don't overdo it either. Like smug. Next, I'm gonna connect the air line, the hose for the intake thing, and I'm gonna put all the air lines back in and all the connectors back in. With everything back in place, I tested the system again, and it's holding pressure. Now, we can put the wheel liner back on. Alright, so we've got... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 nuts to put back in. And... This here goes at the top, it only goes over one of them. That goes underneath the rear half.
now, all that's left to do is reinstall the panels under the car. I had also removed the central panels too to check out how things looked on the bottom end, so I'm putting those back on as well. With the car back on the ground, we were able to take it for a test drive. So after a quick drive, it's driving nicely. We've got no more squeaks. The compressor's not kicking on anymore. And yeah, I think that was a successful suspension overhaul. So it's definitely good to be able to drive this car again. Now, there's definitely more to do, but we'll get to that eventually. So that's the air suspension wrapped up. It's holding air, it's quiet, and I think it looks extra nice with the new wheels. Another big thank you to Max Peating Rods for sponsoring this air suspension rebuild. I'll leave links in the description if you want to check out the struts and compressor that I used. If this video helped you out, leave a like. If you've encountered weird fixes like the vice grip and zip ties that were holding in the compressor, tell me about that in the comments. And if you want to see what else we're going to fix and upgrade on this car, subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.